Well, if you got a dollar, won't just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. Hey, it's Patrick for Trusty Huckster Mercantile on a uh, surprisingly busy street in downtown Geneva, Illinois, in front of Bell Jar Vintage, a uh, store I just heard about literally today and decided to try and swing in and see what they've got. So we've got a uh, vintage store on the uh, main drag of Geneva, Illinois, and let's see what they've got in store for us. There's all kinds of fun and interesting things here at Bell Jar Vintage, and this one I had to uh, phone a friend because I did not know what it was. At the time I found it, it didn't have a tag, but you guys get the cheat sheet because it is a foundry mold. And uh, that did not cross my mind. <laughs> this was a case where I kept thinking it was some sort of a door. It was made out of wood. It's got the molded pieces or the, the, um, the uh, let's see, the inverse you know, where you'd want the cavity uh, on both sides. But I'm like, it's not, it doesn't have a hinge. What exactly is this? So it does have the two handles, I'm assuming to actually put it into place. And then maybe this was to, who knows, hang it, lock it into place, who knows uh, how it was actually used, but it's a very cool looking piece. Very, got that great industrial look and would look great just sitting, uh, hanging on a wall. And uh, at the price of 48 bucks, a, uh, pretty unique piece of art that you're not going to find at Hobby Lobby. This was a fun piece of industrial kind of uh, hidden away here with uh, some of the porcelain. It is a small printing press. So you've got the lever action here on the top, you've got the handle all the way up top. You bring it down, the metal brace here presses against this kind of flexible tin top and presses into the actual uh, um, metal plate that you would have underneath it. A little metal plate, you know, slides in and out. Just so, yeah, I can't imagine anyone would use it as a functional piece anymore, but again, as a decorative object, price on this is, uh, you know, 48 bucks, a magic price. And this would look fantastic just you know, hanging out on a bookshelf. And uh, if you've got some uh, antique printing blocks to kind of display with it, it'd make a great vignette. A uh, little bit of industrial, but with the nice gold detailing on there, it's uh, beautiful as well. Just wanted to show this really quick because you come across these little uh, shadow boxes or printer cases sometimes, and you're always people are always looking for things to go in them. And what they've got here are a lot of the Wade Whimsies. I haven't had them in a while, uh, but I did have a batch that I was selling um, quite, quite regularly. And it's a great way of displaying uh, you know, really small items like that, but then still giving them a little bit of significance because they get their own little spot, like Mr. Rhino. Uh, some great little pieces, you know, also going into some of the Eastern European, the lacquer pieces, some vintage little puppy there up on, up on end. You know, it's just great when you have a cabinet like this or a shelf like this. You know, so part of the fun is just figuring out how to fill it up. This is a fantastic display that she's created with all the vintage sewing notions. So you've got this fun basket of all of the new old stock of buttons, some great old patterns available. You've got the attachment kit for the Singer zigzag sewing machine, great old uh, probably 70s sewing basket got the older uh, sewing basket with the uh, uh, asian items uh, stitched under their tied under the top popular look sold a couple of those got the darning old darning uh, tool i'm not sure what you call that little pin cushion Sometimes it's just fun to look through some of these because you don't even realize that they were once sold in their original packaging, you know, a skirt marker or the sewing machine attachment that makes buttonholes. So some fun, fun stuff. Oh, that's what I need. The thread -o -matic. I have the hardest time threading my needles. You know, in the rare cases that I have to replace a button, half the time I just throw the shirt away. Um, big jar of buttons, you know, so great stuff and a great way to display it for people looking to build their collection. I wanted to highlight this item because this is just fantastic as they've displayed it here as a 
piece of wall art. I'm assuming it used to be a kid's play table, would have had legs on it, uh, but now you've just got the, the metal, the metal top uh, left that looks great on the wall, and it's just screaming for an attachment to go in the middle and turn it back into a clock. It probably would have had the little fake arms on it so that kids could learn, you know, how to tell time, but hang that on the wall, put a functioning mechanism in there, and you have the most interesting clock in the neighborhood. One of our favorite places when the Huckster Helper was growing up was Colonial Williamsburg. We lived on the East Coast. We were about three hours from there. And I think in the couple of years that we lived out there, we went nine times uh, to Colonial Williamsburg and only to Williamsburg. We didn't go to the amusement park or any of that. Uh, and Huckster Helper is now love and history. So I think this is a part of it. So this is just a fun piece to showcase a little sampler that was done. And just, you know, some basic things about Colonial Williamsburg. It really wasn't even, it was rebuilt in the 30s by the Rockefeller. Uh, so if you ever see something that talks about, you know, Williamsburg or, the, or it shows the capital, capital basically burned to the ground for, you know, over 100 years. So it's going to be something from the 30s or 40s. And this one does actually happen to have a date on it. Looks like it says 1948, maybe. I think her stitchery could uh, be improved, but it's a cool piece, a great, still a great vintage piece. Just, you know, we're not talking colonial area. It's just colonial, colonial era. It's just a cool piece from Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, another one of my deep dives focused on vintage cameras. And admittedly, it was one that we tried to put too much into a one hour interview. Uh, but there was, it was chock full of information. It, it was with George the Antique Nomad, who is absolutely an encyclopedia of information. And it's a great deep dive to uh, go back and re-reference because so many tips were um, put into that, that uh, interview. But this is just a great display, whether you're really into cameras or you're just looking to kind of have a little vignette or add some industrial look to your design. Um, there's some beautiful pieces in here going from, you know, the older collapsible, you know, much more uh, an antique camera up to more of a deco style uh, and uh, with the brownie cameras uh, showing here. So if industrial vintage is your jam, I have found your Valhalla. We've got some great advertising pieces tins, tobacco, bottles, um, medicinal tins. Uh, you've got some great old display cabinets. Uh, you know, look at that awesome pens quality uh, nibs. I did a deep dive on fountain pens, so that's just kind of a cool uh, tin box for the pens uh, nib company. Um, phonograph needles. I actually really don't come across those very often. This one's kind of cool. It's a battery, Atlas Battery Company, and uh, they made a bank out of it. You know, it is a bank when they, they sold it. So Atlas Power Packed Long Life. I don't know the era on that one, um, but I thought it was cool that they turned one of their tins, functionally made it a bank. So I thought that was kind of cool. Love these old advertising um, calendars. This one's actually a mirror. God Bless America from Ricky's Market. And this one's dated 1943, so we're smack in the middle of World War II, which would be why we're going to have some great Americana. Forgot to bring my black light, but I'm sure that that's going to give you some good glow in that uranium glass. Again, just some really cool, I'll we'll get into some of the alcohol bottles. Love the little small ones. Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. A nice little drunk. And check out this television alignment generator. I don't know what it does, but it looks really cool. Great spring display with a lot of bunnies, a lot of uh, spring and Easter decor. I wanted to highlight some of the glass that's on display. And in addition to the great uh, uranium glass, there are these two little plates that, as you know, Trusty Huckster is going to go after the anything that looks like a coaster. And if you've seen some of my earlier videos, um, these are the pair point uh, 
plate cups, cup plates. So they're not necessarily saucers. These you know, were a big thing in the 80s, uh, 70s and 80s, that these two happen to be the same design. They're both this, the Stormy Petrol. Uh, but you can see this one has curved glass on the edge and that one has uh, more the, the uh, leaf design on the edge. So not 100% sure, you know, if these would have been sold as a set or something, uh, why they have more than one design, but uh, some cool pieces and only four bucks. So pretty much, you know, in line with what the pair point cup plates uh, typically go for. So that was Bell Jar Vintage in downtown Geneva, Illinois. Uh, she said the shop has been open since November. Uh, I just had not heard of it or had not had a chance to drive by and notice that it was there. It's on the main drag of... Um, State Street, Route 38 in downtown Geneva. So it's gonna have some great traffic and definitely had uh, some good traffic noise as I was trying to do some of the filming. Uh, at one point the video, uh, the door of the store was open and it was uh, difficult to do some videos. Uh, and it was, it's a, it's a cute little store. The bulk of it is one person's uh, collection uh, that she's selling of her own inventory. She does have a small portion of it that is rented out to another um, another vendor. So it's not really a vendor mall. Uh, so it did make it a little bit more challenging to do a video in there because at any given point, she could hear me. She knew exactly what I was doing and exactly what I was saying. So I'll actually edit a couple of the videos because she added information after I did the video uh, that I think would be interesting uh, for everyone to see. Uh, so this one will end up being a shorter video, but that's quite all right. You know, it's, it's a great to explore and... Uh, basically discover a uh, new vintage locations and it's great that she's doing so well because we need these vintage stores to survive she has some great prices and a really interesting array of items so if you're ever in geneva illinois make sure you stop by on the north side of the street bell, J bell jar vintage uh, in geneva illinois and uh, thank you for watching the video if you've made it this far and you're not a subscriber really appreciate you subscribing to my channel maybe giving the video a thumbs up uh, leave me a comment if you saw anything you liked or uh, anything that you you are specifically looking for, I'll be on the lookout for you and uh, maybe try and include it in one of my next videos. So thanks for giving me your time. Thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. We'll talk to you again later. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.